diplomats from all parts of the world sit together to work out plans for a peace which can last. In all parts of the world, too, the task of rebuilding a war-shocked world has begun. Where the damage was small, much of the work of reconstruction is already well on its way. In other places, in Dunkirk and Calais, in Genoa and Turin, in Nagasaki and Hiroshima, in Stuttgart and Berlin, the bare skeletons of cities still stand, and little more has been done than to pile the rubble beside the streets so that every brick and stone may be used again. The physical costs of war can be figured in hundreds of billions of dollars. The real costs of war cannot be estimated for a generation, for it will take a generation to analyze the effects of war on the lives of people in all parts of the world. Today, one fact is apparent, and that is that the moral fiber of whole peoples has been badly strained. It is hard to make a child see the difference between stealing from an enemy invader and stealing from a merchant of his own town. Today, in most countries of Europe, there are packs of young people banded together as thieves, and no property is safe from them. In many cities today, every place of healthful recreation is closed. There's no YMCA, there are no movies left, there are no fields for play. Schools are destroyed and the only place open to youth is the dimly lit wine shop where he goes for some sort of human companionship. Today in areas of Europe, whole families of six, eight, even more live huddled together in one room in temporary wooden shelters. It is no wonder that boys and girls in that condition are fast losing all sense of moral values. There is little food, little fuel, and no warm clothes for protection against the bitter cold of winter. It is little wonder that the thoughts of these people do not turn to spiritual things when their food is limited to a few ounces of black bread each week, softened by watery soup made without even a small piece of meat stock to give it strength. It is little wonder that they're concerned more with the physical needs of shoes and a warm coat than for their immortal soul. It is little wonder that whole nations are beginning to lose their pride and flaunt openly the laws of the land. All this, we may say, does not affect us here in America. We're raising our sons and daughters with a sense of moral values. We're giving them a Christian education. Also, through the all over the world. Certainly, we are doing much for the physical relief of both Europe and Asia. We are doing this, too, because we're a Christian people and because we want to help repair some of the damages of war. We know that we hate war and that our children will hate war. We are determined that war shall not come again. But this is a decision which we cannot make good alone. The children of Europe, the children of Asia, will have a voice in the world we are to build. And it is only as we help to establish moral and Christian values there, just as we do with our own children, that we can be successful. The major task of the churches is to help re-establish a deeply religious conscience, both in Europe and in Asia. In the beautiful city of Geneva in Switzerland, the churches of America, England, Sweden, and other Christian countries have established the headquarters of the World Council of Churches. From these modest offices comes the direction of a program which is now reaching into almost all parts of Europe with an efficient plan, supervised in each area by the ministers who know their people best. In one country, the director may be a Methodist, in another, an old Catholic, in still another, a Lutheran or Greek Orthodox. The call for help comes from a small Belgian village to the Brussels headquarters of the World Council of Churches. Shoes and warm clothes are needed to face the hard Belgian winter. It is the unfading rule that not creeds, but human needs must determine the size of the order. Protestants, old Catholics, Orthodox and Roman Catholics, all of them may share if their needs are great.
Then at Brussels, the women of the headquarters congregation fill the order as best they can. The pastor of the village has sent a list of sizes and the exact number of each garment needed, from the bins of clothing, which have come from Boston, Kansas City, or from Portland. Each garment is selected for size and usefulness. There is no pay for this work. The women have little of their own to give, but they can give long hours in cold rooms to do their share. In Europe, transportation is still a problem, but somehow the package reaches its destination and then the distribution begins. Here, too, there are no paid workers, but mothers come to the barracks church to see that those whose needs are greatest receive the clothes you supply. In this one Belgian village alone, every garment of every child came from the churches of America. There is little waste in the system of clothing distribution of the World Council of Churches. With warmer clothes, with food which has been supplied for the particularly bad areas, the next great need is for some central place of worship, and in many places all churches lie in ruins. The demands of the people are not great. They do not ask for a cathedral, nor do they ask help in rebuilding the places of worship which have been bombed. They hope to do that job themselves. But they do ask help in getting just a wooden hut, large enough for a congregation of 50 or 60, a place where they can worship with their neighbors. The World Council of Churches is supplying this need, too. From the Swiss Army, they were able to buy prefabricated huts, and these have been sent to all parts of Europe. There is little cost for erection because the people themselves do the work with willing hands. In this little town, there's a barracks church. It serves as a place of worship, but it serves also as the school, because all of the schools were bombed too. The pastor and his wife teach the children. The person does not need to be a sentimentalist to have a lump in his throat when he watches this man of God wearing used American clothes, teaching his children songs of joy for Christmas. <laughs> There's another use, too, for the Swiss barracks supplied by the World Council of Churches. In Dunkirk, there's a good example. In the drab outskirts of this terribly destroyed city is the Foyer Simad, a place of recreation for the young men and women of the neighborhood. The young Presbyterian minister is in charge of this work, and every night for almost two years, he has had an open house for those who have no place to go. On most nights, there are games in the library, but regularly, each week, there are serious talks of the Bible. For you see mad, wholesome fellowship and the Christian atmosphere which they find there. The World Council of Churches does not confine itself to any one activity. It tries to reach and help people wherever they are. All over Europe, there are thousands of displaced persons, people who have been driven from their homes and have no place to go, people who have spent their war years in the hell holes of concentration camps, people who even today cannot speak of their experiences without deep emotion. In Bellevue, near Paris, is an old castle which was given as a rest home for these expatriates. It has little heat, no modern conveniences, but it is a home. These people are like us, doctors, lawyers, professors, and sometimes their wives. The churches of America are aiding them in their destitution. These people are taken in when they're ill and despondent, and when they're able, they're given homely tasks to do. Each one helps to prepare the next meal, and when they're strong, each has helped to find a job he can do. Some hope to be allowed to return to their homes, Others hope to go to South America, Canada, or the United States. But regardless of their destiny, they all give thanks each day to the gracious God who made it possible for them to regain human dignity. 
In our private lives, each one of us would be glad of the chance to save the life of one child. And yet, through our church, collectively, we are saving the lives of many. This little girl is one of them. She has been in the interchurch hospital at Genoa in Italy for a year. After her father's death, she and her mother were driven from their home. The medicine and care which give this baby, now well, a chance for a happy and useful life were supplied by you. In the same hospital, men and women of many nationalities are given care whether they have money or not. On one page of the record book, five homesick American seamen are listed. As a daily part of the hospital life, there is a visit from an Italian minister. He cannot speak all of the languages, but when he reads a daily lesson from his Bible, Americans, French, Greeks, Spanish, all gather round, because in this place, they are very close to God. La mia coppa è sempre piena. La tua grazia e pietà mi dà in questa vita, e poi con te sarò nel regno dei cieli. The doctors, the nurses, and all of the other workers are performing their acts of mercy because they believe they are carrying out God's will. The work of the church must lead to the cross of Calvary if it is to have a meaning. On a beach at Dunkirk is another barracks church. None of the old buildings remains. Only temporary wooden buildings, each one housing several families. It is from these homes that the church draws its congregation. Every Sunday evening they draw together as a little reed organ plays and as they sing their hymns, there is the feeling that these people are very close to God. pastor begins the Lord's Prayer. The whole congregation joins in. Notre Père qui es aux cieux, que ton nom soit sanctifié, que ton règne vienne, que ta volonté soit faite sur la terre comme au ciel. Donne-nous aujourd'hui notre pain quotidien. Pardonne-nous nos offenses comme nous pardonnons à ceux qui nous ont offensés. Et ne nous induis pas en tentation, mais délivre-nous du mal, car c'est à toi qu'appartiennent dans tous les siècles le règne, la puissance et la gloire. Amen. The service ends with the benediction. Que la grâce de notre Seigneur Jésus-Christ, l'amour de Dieu notre Père et la communion du Saint-Esprit reste et demeure avec vous dès maintenant et à jamais. Amen. There is a feeling in those of us who have seen this thing that we too have been very close to God. Mm -hmm.